WFSB. This is an Eyewitness News update. Good morning, everyone. It is January 18th and it's Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nicole Nalepa with your top stories. This morning in New Haven, lawmakers will be announcing their push to make Ethan's law a federal law. Now, Ethan's law requires weapons to be stored and locked in a safe way. And it was established in Connecticut nearly four years ago when Guilford teen Ethan Song was shot and killed at a friend's home. At 9.30 a.m., Representative Rosa DeLauro, Senator Richard Blumenthal, and Senator Chris Murphy, alongside Ethan's parents, will be fighting for this change. Ethan's law has garnered national attention in light of recent mass shootings. And if this bill passes, it would carry strict penalties for owners who do not store firearms away properly. Residents and businesses in Hartford are calling out environmental agencies this morning to help them clean up dirty living conditions. Last night at a public forum, tenants said that they have been consistently having to clean up basement flooding and septic overflows. One resident claims over 73,000 gallons of sewage flooded her home and it took over a week for MDC to investigate. MDC was also at last night's meeting and did not speak publicly. However, it did release a statement saying that they have been spending over a billion and a half dollars on wastewater improvements. The EPA is also expected to get involved by coming out next week to assess the damage. And a new proposal about child vaccinations is getting some major backlash. A proposal from Representative Kevin Ryan would allow children as young as 12 years old to choose to receive a vaccination without parental consent. Right now, the law states that children must be 18 years or older before making a personal choice. As far as lawmakers go, the issue is pretty split. The Public Health Committee will decide whether this proposal will go forward at the state capitol. And a mother from Meriden has been sentenced to 40 years in prison for killing her little boy back in 2016. A jury found Karen Zolkowski guilty back in November. She was convicted of suffocating her eight-year-old son, Elijah, and then setting their Davis Street home on fire. Police in Middletown are now investigating a fight that broke out yesterday at Middletown High School. This massive brawl erupted at a boys basketball game last night between Middletown and Weaver High School. Police tell us the fight started between the players on the court, but then quickly adults and students that were in the stands joined in. Police say the brawl was quickly broken up, though one staff member suffered some minor injuries. And right now, investigators are reviewing the footage of the fight to try and see how it all started. Police in Ellington have made an arrest in connection to an arson at a Masonic Lodge. Investigators say 23-year-old Salvatore de Grandis is responsible for this crime. The fire started on January 7th, and investigators say they were able to track down the suspect through surveillance photos. And investigators in West Hartford say a pair of thieves used counterfeit money to go on quite the shopping spree. Officers at West Farms Mall say that they arrested Desmond Bonds of Manchester and Rondell Jackson of Middletown. Police say the two had purchased nearly $2,000 worth of merchandise from counterfeit bills. Bonds was already wanted on nearly two dozen outstanding warrants across the state of Connecticut and Massachusetts. An iconic Hartford Irish pub, The Half Door, has announced that they will be closing down. The owner of the bar says that they were unable to reach an agreement with the landlord on how to move forward with the current location. So their final last call at that location will be next week, but they do hope to open in a spot somewhere else soon. And the historic covered bridge in Cornwall has reopened weeks after it was damaged. A truck carrying a piece of heavy machinery destroyed a portion of the roof last month while the truck was driving through. And the damage was so extensive that the bridge had to be closed. But again, the Cornwall Bridge is back open this morning. All right, uh, we are taking a look at Holy Land in uh, Watertown. A little break in the action there. Mostly overcast conditions prevail. Uh, there's a couple of spotty showers in parts of northeast and southeast Connecticut. Not a big deal, uh, but for the most part, oh, look how pretty Old Saybrook is with that little sliver of pink there. Absolutely gorgeous. The camera that never disappoints. Certainly not this morning. And Mystic looking really good this morning as well. That is one bucket truck that I am not getting in. So thank you very much. All right, as we take a look at our early warning dual pole radar, the only live Doppler radar in Connecticut. Uh, again, scanning a couple of sprinkles in Wyndham, Canterbury, Hanover, down through Basra, up to Chaplin stores. You might be dealing with a couple of raindrops on the campus there. Down into Fairfield County, a couple of raindrops in Winston. 
uh, Weston, Wilton, Easton, and Trumbull. Good morning to you. And we'll take you up a little bit further. I'm watching this little blob move into uh, just to the south of Kent and Gaylordsville. So, uh, you know what? You know, I don't even think you need the umbrella. It's going to be a basically dry day today, just mostly cloudy and very, very mild. Visibility at a perfect 10. Temperatures 40 degrees in New London. Typical overnight low, 18. That's the number you should be seeing in this column, in the temperature column, 18. Instead, we're 35, 38, 39, and 40 degrees. 41 in Danbury and in Chester. 41 degrees on January 18th. You gotta love it. Where is winter? All right, and the temperature differential, we're up anywhere from 8 to 10 to 11 degrees warmer than yesterday. The wind's basically calm, so there's not a lot of wind chill out there this morning. Uh, it's pretty remarkable. Uh, satellite and radar confirms that little sprinkle moving through parts of uh, Brooklyn, Wyndham, Norwich, down through maybe even New London getting clipped with a little sprinkle, but not a big deal. And as we widen out the shot, moisture from off the Great Lakes will stay basically to the north of Connecticut. Let's take a look at early morning future cast. It's tomorrow's weather today. Uh, we are looking at mostly cloudy skies. And then tonight we clear things out. Tomorrow we start off okay. Tomorrow morning's commute looks fine. It's tomorrow late morning, early afternoon. Precipitation starts rolling in, and that's in the form of a mix for inland Connecticut. That quickly goes over to all rain for the rest of the state. It's all rain, 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 rain through early Friday morning. Now, Friday, here comes a little blip of snow. Could lead to a dusting, to a coating, to a half an inch, to an inch in parts of northern Connecticut before it makes an exit Friday afternoon. Here's the model depiction. Again, Thursday morning, nothing. Thursday evening, rain on the American model, just a little bit of a mix in parts of uh, northwest Connecticut. And then both the European and the American model have a little bit of mixing Friday morning. So this is something we'll have to keep a close eye on. Friday morning's commute could be a little tricky. Daytime highs today, March into the upper 40s. Possibly 50, 51 degrees by later on along the shoreline with mostly cloudy skies and breezy conditions. The breeze could gust 25 to 30 miles an hour from time to time. That'll make things feel a little bit cooler, but with temperatures in the upper 40s to near 50, whoa. 42 tomorrow. The next storm rolls in tomorrow late morning in the form of basically rain, a little snow Friday morning. That exits. Saturday looks good. Sunday, another storm rolls in in the afternoon and the mixed precipitation once again changing over to plain rain for Monday. 707 is now the time. Nicole, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thanks, Scott. And thank you for tuning in to Eyewitness News this morning on your Wednesday. Remember, you can download the Channel 3 app to get everything that you need, weather, traffic, and of course, all of your top headlines. Be healthy, stay positive, and have a great day, everyone. Enjoy the mild temperatures on January 18th.